So both parties agree that we need to reach net zero by 2050, but they provide different pathways for getting there. This uh, is, in some sense, a return to the climate wars that we've had for the last 10 to the 15 years, where there's been a diversity of opinion on the decarbonisation or otherwise of the economy. Uh, the fact that we have uh, not uh, any agreement on the path forward for decarbonising the electricity sector is inevitably going to mean that we push up the price of doing this. And uh, this is simply because of the greater risk and the increased cost of finance for investors in the energy market. Hi, I'm Ken Baldwin. I'm Emeritus Professor at the Australian National University. And my interest is in advancing the energy transition that we are currently engaged in and looking at the best path forward. And so really the question is, what is the cheapest way of doing that? And the answer is quite clearly to use renewable energy, solar and wind, because it's much, much cheaper than going down the nuclear pathway. Will this mean that electricity bills will be higher or lower in the future? Who knows? It's very difficult to predict because uh, don't forget that the cost of uh, generating the electricity is only a small fraction, around about a quarter or maybe a third, of the power bill that you receive from the retailers. The rest of it uh, comes as the cost of the transmission and distribution lines, uh, the retailers' uh, profit margin and various government charges. So even uh, were we to be able to control the wholesale price of electricity, uh, that still only makes a small component of the electricity bill we'll be paying in the future. Of course, there is one option that uh, we do need to keep on the table, and that is the ability to perhaps use nuclear power in the late 2040s to just decarbonise the last few percent of the electricity sector. And to keep all our options open, the best thing we could do is to simply remove the legislated prohibition on nuclear power, which is part of the federal and state law. And that way we would be taking a completely technology neutral approach and we could use the cheapest and most effective way of adopting a 2050 net zero goal when and if we need it.